Heel Toe Automotive here, Marcus DiCivella, HeelToeAuto.com. That's where you would buy all your parts. I'm underneath the HT Spec TLXS. We're just borrowing it for a little while. While I've got it on the rack, I wanted to do some exploring. One of the things I want to really check out and do a deep dive into was the exhaust system. So this exhaust, you all know, is an active exhaust. It's got a little valve in the back that opens up in certain drive modes and certain RPMs, which is super awesome. It sounds great. It's not aftermarket. It's definitely a uh, a factory exhaust so you're definitely gonna find periods of time when you wish that it was a little bit louder and I think that a lot of enthusiasts really would appreciate that sport and sport plus sound at all drive modes um, so I'm kind of thinking that we might do an exhaust system that has more sound all the way around but still have that dual zone sort of nature uh, I'm not 100% sure how we're gonna pull that off it would be a first for the ATLP exhaust brand to do anything like that um, but I think it could definitely use a new exhaust system. Some of the details that I'm gonna show you here um, have me scratching my head just a little bit. Just some of the piping diameters I'm not really sure about. So I'm gonna pull it off of here, give you some of the step-by-step, -step, some of the how-tos. And so at least when it comes time to do one of these exhaust installs on your own, you'll have a bit of a guide. So first things first, we got these underbody panels, which are super cool aerodynamic pieces. The lower subframe connector kind of passes underneath the exhaust system. So we want to drop this down. And in order to do that, you're going to need to, uh, to pull this little under tray down, which is just a couple of these clips that you pop with a screwdriver. They come out super easy. You don't want to force them too much. These are new, so they're not all cruddy and dirty. Um, once they get a bunch of dirt inside them, they can break pretty easily. Right, um, now with this uh, shield down, you can see that this bolt is gonna come off. The one in the back has a slot on it, so you only need to completely remove this one. I've already pre-loosened the one back there. It is slotted, but it didn't want to come out all the way, so anyway. With those cross braces down, you can see that the exhaust system does this weird swoopy thing. And we've got uh, one connection here uh, for uh, one muffler. There's one rubber hanger on this muffler, one on that muffler. There's one on either side here, and then there's one on either side farther up. All right, so to pull this exhaust out of the car, I think I'm going to have a little bit of a thought process here. We've got one flange here, two rubber hangers, two rubber hangers, two rubber hangers, and then the front three bolt flange. Um, I've done this all kinds of different ways. It always would be most handy if you could have an extra hand or two um, to just sort of hold things. But I think what I'm going to try to do is remove these rubber hangers all in the middle and suspend it from the front and the rear. That way I can get a cart or something underneath here to support, undo the rear hangers and let it drop a little bit, and then undo the three bolts in the front. So let's see how that works. I've got some silicone spray on these uh, hangers already, which is a really important part of getting them off of the rubber hangers. Usually I'm using a pry bar or channel locks to, uh, to push the hangers out of the rubber. These exhaust hangers can be a real pain some of the time. This cart should hold the exhaust when I drop it down so that I can undo the front. The access here is pretty limited. I'm gonna to try to do this without smashing the camera. First thing we're gonna do is undo this connector to the active exhaust. Don't wanna drop that down with hanging by those wires. There we go. <laughs> Now that it's not dangling quite as bad, I can get this other side off. 
sometimes that first one you need to do in order to get your technique down. All the rubber bushings are off, and now the only thing holding the exhaust in the car is the three bolt connector in the front. So let's go pop that off. I love working on new cars. <laughs> okay, so that side is supported by the cart, which is on wheels. So when I pull this off, it's gonna wanna fall, but at least I can roll it forward nicely. Yeah, there we go. And most of the weight is actually in the back of the system. It's actually balanced on there really well. Let's raise up the car so that we can get a good overview of this exhaust. Okay, here we are, the TLX Type S exhaust system. We got the inlet here, merge, dual pipes, slightly smaller looking dual pipes. Um, all one system on the one side and a single flange on this side. Got the muffler boxes and those active exhaust actuators. Ooh, how cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see if we can see a brand on here. Cooster Automotive. Interesting. With the exhaust system off the car, we had easy access to the rear catalytic converter. There's another one up on the downpipe, but just looking at this one, pretty simple to remove. All right, I've got my caliper here. We're gonna do some measuring, see what size all these uh, pipes are in this TLX Type S exhaust system. Um, the inlet diameter here, I'm actually showing uh, 72 millimeters, which is just under three inches. We would normally do a three inch there. So if we do an ATLP system, let's see with this outlet to the converter. Yeah, the outlet to the converter is two and three quarters. So we would probably step that up to three for a capback system. Um, the OD on this pipe, we have 2.12. These are gonna be two inch pipes right here. So again, we would jump those up to two and a quarter. A little bit conservative with the exhaust piping size. I guess that's pretty typical. You would normally expect to see the exhaust on the car be a little bit smaller um, on the factory setup. So, you know, no big surprise there, but we would definitely go about a quarter inch up here and a quarter inch up on each one of these, which would be, you know, quite a bit more volume. After the exhaust comes off of there, you get these two sections that are like really odd looking. These almost looked like these sections were afterthoughts. Like there maybe was resonators in here and then they took them out. I'm not sure, but the OD here is 1.91 inches. Um, and we can probably estimate that about 46 millimeters in each one of these. Now, sometimes they'll do that kind of thing to increase exhaust gas velocity because in a smaller pipe the same exhaust is going to go through but it's going to try to travel a little bit faster so it's entirely possible that these are here to increase exhaust gas velocity through this little small sections uh, they could be a little bit smaller for sound uh, reasons a little bit smaller pipe is going to have a little less sound so maybe there's a little drone that they didn't need to use a resonator and use these smaller pipes instead two and a quarter all the way is going to be a performance option and there's plenty of room up in the chassis to add some resonators here to keep the sound in check. I think that we can get a lot more flow out of this exhaust system by making the piping larger and with those resonators maintain a really nice luxury sound in the normal and comfort modes. So these S bends in the tailpipes are really interesting looking. They would be pretty difficult to fabricate, I imagine. I am not 100% sure that that is the most efficient way to do this. Yeah, the diff is right here. The subframe is here, so it's got to pass in between all that stuff. So yeah, doing an aftermarket fabrication in here is going to be pretty tight. But it does look like it's pretty symmetrical, which if we could program the bend profile on one side and just mirror it for the other, that would make our fabrication a little easier. Let's actually see what the tailpipe sizes are. I'm assuming these are going to be, yeah, two inch, just like up there, 2.25. So maybe these are like two and an eighth ID. It could be that they've gone two inch, 1.75, and then a little bit larger out here. It seems like what they've done. Kind of an interesting move, I think. 
So I am pretty curious about these valves. I'm gonna do a quick Google just to see what's going on with these guys. Cooster exhaust actuator. Oh, look at this. Wow, oh, a Ford part number. That's interesting. Or you can get a pair of them on eBay used for a hundred bucks. It looks like we're gonna be able to possibly get new actuator valves for these. Let's see what makes one of these things tick. All right, yeah, so this spring hits in these detents here. There's our valve. They gave it a Honda part number, even though it's a Cooster part. So I wonder where this valve comes from. Where did they get this? Exploring this exhaust system was a lot of fun. It's really interesting all the different diameters that have been put into play here. With the exhaust system all taken off and examined, it was time to put it back on the car and see how it sounds in real life. There's a lot of hype surrounding the exhaust system on the Acura TLX Type S. The active exhaust is no joke. The dynamic drive mode selector provides a great opportunity to get just the right sound out of the exhaust system. We'll be looking to do something that's maybe as aggressive sounding as the sport setting on everyday driving and then something a little bit more raw and crazy for the active setting. We'll see how it turns out after we do some development. It was a pleasure having you along for this exhaust system deep dive. All kinds of more information is gonna come up on this TLX Type S as we dive into more systems. Heel Toe's in your corner. Shop at heeltoeauto.com for all your Honda and Acura accessories.